It's day 161 and we are in Deuteronomy chapter 8. Welcome to a word for today. This morning, our guest is Pastor Mesan Kameja coming from Japan. Good morning, Mesan. What is your word for today? Good morning, Pastor B. And my word is dwell. Dwell. Well, on Friday, we had the word well, but we're talking about the word dwell. So let us know... Um, where we can find that word. What verse number? So in Deuteronomy 8, verse 12, we found the word dwell there. And I'll be reading from New King James Version. But um, for the sake of, you know, the the audience and those that are watching, um, it will be better to start from verse 11 mm. and then read verse 12 and probably jump to verse 14. Then we okay. have a... A little idea of what um that how that word was used as well in this uh, okay verse. so understanding the the context so that we can understand the text okay let's let's do that then so you're reading from verse 11 please please go ahead pastor so he says beware that you do not forget the lord your god by not keeping his commandment his judgment and his statutes which i command you today lest when you have eaten and are full, and have built beautiful houses, and dwell in them. Mm. Then verse 14, when your heart is lifted up, and you forget the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, from the house of bondage. Mm, I like that. Um, last week, we spoke about how uh, they were reminded of the bad things that they had done, and and then we had the, the positive things as well. And here, even in this chapter, you read verse 11, which says, don't forget right. keeping God's commandments. But in verse two, it's put in a positive way. Thou shalt remember all the ways that God has, uh, has led in the wilderness. Why did you choose this word dwell? So um, I chose dwell for probably many reasons, but one of the things that uh, has always captivated me with this word is, is found in, you know, you know, Psalm 27 mm. and uh, it has been actually uh, a word or maybe a song that I always sing. And that word was always there. But in this chapter, starting from, you know, um, the first verse, God is telling them to remember what he's done for them mm. and dwell is used in a probably negative connotation here. To, you know, to, to let them know that um, dwelling in beautiful houses that they have made is not um, the end that God wants for them. They want, mm. he, he wants them to remember him. But that dwelling in, um, I would say, in a temporal home made people, his people, to forget him. Mm. So... That word dwell, it has a good connotation. In this verse, it was not used um, in, in, in encouraging them to be looking after dwelling in that place because mm -hmm. what God wants us to dwell in something that is even better than mm. our houses. And that's, uh, that's ironic because I remember when we were in Exodus chapter 25, looking at verse 8, I believe it was Dr. Masozzi who shared... Um, that word um, spoke about the sanctuary. God spoke to Moses and said, let them make me, let them build me a sanctuary that I may dwell with them. And of course, this is positive. This is good news that in spite of our sin and sin separating us from God, that God desires to bridge the gap, to be with us, to dwell with us. That's positive. But now we are choosing or the, the children of Israel are choosing to dwell in in places which uh, which would affect their their relationship, which have a negative impact. Um, and so we see God, and and we see the the choices that that we make, and uh, and we have this picture of uh, of salvation. What else can you tell us about this word and and the lessons that we can learn? And so this word, um, the Hebrew word, um, you know, is yeshab. And that word, as I looked at it, um, it's also saying to sit. 
to remain, mm. to abide, to live. Okay, okay. And and so these people have decided to to sit in mm. their beautiful house, to remain in their beautiful house, to abide in their beautiful houses, and forget about God, and forget that He was the one that brought them out of the land of you know uh, Egypt, out of the mm. house of bondage. He's the one that has led them into the promised land, has given them all this stuff. But mm. then they've decided to abide, to live in things that are taking them away from God. And I was just thinking about this, and I asked myself the question, am I sitting, remaining, abiding, living in something that is taking me away from God? Could it be my relationship? Mm. Am I remaining in a relationship that, is taking me away from God. Okay. Am I, you know, dwelling in um in a job, in a career that is taking me away from God, right? Mm. Am I dwelling in a in a city, in a country that is my dream? I have I've, I've invested everything and I have forgotten that God is one that brought me in this land and has given me the opportunities that I have. So dwell is very interesting because a lot of us could be seeking to remain in something that we've either built um, or we have invested in and mm. we have forgotten that God was a source of everything and God wants us to remember him mm. and to dwell in him. Mm. Two, two lessons. Is, um, mm. In fact, it's one lesson, but stated two ways. Remember God. And don't right. forget God. So it's the, it's the same message just put in in, in different ways, um, different, different words. Way. Um, let me share with you two texts, and I'm going to come and ask for your final thoughts, um, Pastor. Um, one is from the Old Testament. One is from the New Testament. And it's based on, on your word dwell. You gave us synonyms. And I'm going to take one synonym from the Old Testament, one from the New Testament. First one is from Psalm chapter 1, which says, Blessed is the man. That walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. And so, if there was if there was a sermon title, I'm giving you an idea right here, Pastor Bessan. Uh, be careful where you sit. And so, if you want to be blessed, Psalm chapter one, the first verse tells us um, how um, we can. Uh, uh, avoid bad company and, and bad associations and affiliations and then let me take you to the new testament going to the the words of jesus if you have a red letter edition you'll find this in uh, john chapter 15 and looking at verse 3 but you'll see this word another synonym of dwell and use sit would be abide and this runs throughout the chapter verse 3 says now uh, so let me go to verse 4 John 15 verse 4, abide or dwell in me and I in you. Isn't that good news? God wants us to dwell in him and, and he in me. I heard one, um, one preacher say that, that, um, that one is justification and then the other one is sanctification. Justification just as if I'd never sinned. Sanctification, it's a process. So it's not enough just to to dwell but keep on dwelling keep on sitting keep on abiding pastor messan what is what are your final thoughts for us this morning i guess my final thoughts will will take us to psalm 27 mm. um and david is sharing something beautiful here um and this is you know a song that um, i learned in french okay. and the words that we find in in verse four and he says, one thing I have desired of the Lord, that I will seek, that I may dwell or abide or remain or sit and live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. And that has been also my desire, mm. that I'm not, you know, seeking and planning and only thinking about dwelling in uh, in, a, in a in a worldly place, right? In a mm. temporary place, I'm seeking to dwell in the presence of God in his house, wherever he sends me among his people to do his work mm. instead of doing other people's work or my own 
you know, desire. So mm. that's something that I want to share with um, with everyone that we may have also the same desire. This one thing that all mm. we want you know, to do is to dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And also, if you remember Psalm 23, he mm. says that at the end also, surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell once again in the house of the Lord forever. It's something that is mm. I'm looking forward to. I'm seeking every day that not just the house in heaven, but the presence God's of God. Presence every mm. single day. Just I like, like you want to dwell in, in me. I also want to dwell um, in, in, in the presence of God every day. Mm. And um, hopefully right. that journey and in heaven and on mm. the earth no thank you for that i i don't think it's fair Messan. you you uh you gave us psalm 27 you gave us psalm 23 using that word dwell it seems like the psalmist has an obsession of dwelling in the presence of god if we had time we don't have time but if we had time i'd point you to uh, psalm chapter 37 and i'll i'll take you to a verse and number three, uh, if we had time, I'd read it for you. And I'd tell you, trust in the Lord and do good. So shalt thou dwell in the land and verily thou shalt be. If we had time, I would have gone to that text, but we don't have time. So we're just going go to go to the Lord in prayer right now. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for all that you've done for us. We thank you for saving us, for taking us from this darkness into your marvelous light. We mm. thank you for your love, your mercy, and your grace. We thank you for we thank you for what you've done for us on the cross and for the free gifts of salvation that we have in you. Lord, mm. we thank you also for blessing us with your presence. We want to dwell in you, oh, just yes. like you want to dwell in us. Lord, help us, dear Lord, to open our hearts so you can come and make your abode in us. And help us, dear Lord, to have that one thing, one thing that we desire is to dwell in your presence, in your house forever and ever. Mm. Bless your people. May we put you first and foremost in our lives. Mm. May you transform us as we bring others to get to know you and also enjoy the goodness, the joy to be in your presence. Yes. Bless us now, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Oh, there you have it. Our word is dwell for today, but uh, it's not limited or restricted to today. We ought to keep on dwelling in the presence of God and have God's presence dwelling in us. Thank you, Pastor Messan, for sharing that. And we pray that God continues to bless you. May you have a wonderful day further. And we pray that God's blessings would be your experience. Thank you for having me. God bless you. Thanks for watching. For all your queries and comments, questions and answers, observations, applications, reservations and consternations, you can leave them all in the comment section below. And don't forget, sharing is caring. So don't keep the past to be channeled to yourself. Don't be selfish. Go and tell somebody. Admit it. You liked that, didn't you? Hit the thumbs up button. And don't forget to subscribe to the Pastor B YouTube channel. I don't want you to miss any content, so make sure that you read.